here we have the internal combustion engine, the four stroke. So here is an image which I will go through and explain what we are used to, the spark plug, the head which the spark plug screws into, the ports also go into the head with the intake and the exhaust port. Then there is the cylinder, which is where the piston that we know of goes up and down. It is connected by the cone rod to the crankshaft, which goes round and round. And then the intake valve opens up air to go into the intake port, and the outlet port has its own valve as well, which lets the exhaust out. The valves are opened by their own cams, the intake cam and the exhaust cam, and these are on shafts which have cogs around them, the cam shaft cogs. This chain goes around these cogs and it goes down to another cog on the crank shaft. When it is running, there are four cycles, each on each stroke, the four strokes. On the first cycle is the intake cycle. The intake valve opens via the intake cam. It lets this air fuel mixture into the cylinder. The piston sucks down and sucks in more air fuel mixture. The valve then closes, and that is the end of the intake cycle. The piston continues on down to bottom dead center. It then moves back up, and this is what is called the compression stroke. The cylinder is completely sealed, and the piston pushes up this air fuel mixture, a gas which is compressed and fired just prior to top dead center. It ignites, and then it expands, not so much as to be an explosion, because there is not that much in there, and pushes down the power stroke on the firing cycle and pushes the piston towards bottom dead center. And then, the last cycle, it pushes the exhaust burnt gas upwards, compresses it, then opens up the exhaust valve, and the gas comes out, the exhaust gas, carbon monoxide. And that is the standard four-stroke internal combustion engine. And now I will just hand you over to Scotty, and he will tell you of the modifications he has done to convert the four-stroke into a two-stroke, which runs on HHO brown gas. Thank you, Ziggy. First thing first, as Ziggy mentioned, when petrol ignites, it expands and gives us the power stroke in the four-stroke engine. HHO, which is hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, the ratio of water converted into hydrogen and oxygen by electrolysis, called Brown's gas. When HHO is ignited in a vacuum, it doesn't expand. It contracts, it implodes, which means the HHO converts back to water when it's ignited. And so the piston needs to be soaked to where it is going. That is the motivating force, is suction, a vacuum. With this in mind, this is how we redesign the four-stroke engine. To have it so we have an intake of Brown's gas. That gas then is drawn out into a greater vacuum, and it is ignited in that vacuum and creates an implosion, which soaks the piston back towards top dead center. Now, as it's coming closer to top dead center, and this is something to bear in mind, there is an 1,800 to 1 ratio, which means the HHO converts back to water when it's ignited. And if there's 1,800 parts of it, it goes back to one part. So instead of having all of these expansive gases, as we do as the side effect the result of burnt petrol, it is 1,800 parts of brown gas atomized. It becomes one drop of water. So as the piston soaking up, and we 
open up the valve just prior to top bed center. We're pushing out this one drop of water, which is atomized as a spray. And so what we also need at the end of the exhaust is a vacuum there to help facilitate the exit of the water. Because we're doing it in two strokes instead of four, we have to double up and sometimes triple up on what we're doing, what phase of the cycles we are doing on each stroke. So we're putting in an amount which is at balance with what our requirements are. And this is best done with fuel injection. The calculations done with a 15 miles per gallon petrol engine running at 60 miles an hour means that it is burning approximately 0.25 of a liter of petrol. HHO with their injection into a standard carburation system or fuel injection, which goes in, in the air take, mixes with the fuel air or petrol. And the result of it is that it burns the petrol quicker. But it's different to being straight on its own. Now, the fact that here is that they're trying to produce between one and three liters of brown gas HHO in order to facilitate this. Now, if we're only requiring 0.25 of regular gasoline, petrol, to run at 50 miles per gallon at 60 miles an hour, then how much brown gas do we need in order to run the engine solely on brown gas as an implosion engine? rather than an internal combustion engine. Even if it was double, half a liter, we can do this a lot more power efficient. Ideally, we want to be passing this in through fuel injection as a carburetor is a completely different ballgame. We do not want oxygen. We already have it with the gas. Fuel injection itself mixes air with oxygen. We do not want it. We just want to spray this in. And so here we have the modified design where the camshafts had the cogs changed to be smaller, half the size, so that it rotate at the same speed as the crankshaft. So what we have is the intake valve opens up, sucks in the brown gas. It goes down partway down in the cycle, and it is ignited down there before bottom bed center, and the result of it is that it starts to contract. Now, as always, there's a delay because of the speed RPM of the engine, so it, that's why it's always before the dead end. And now the piston is sucked back up, and just prior to top dead center, the exhaust valve is opened, and the exhaust condensed water vapor steam is passed out. And that is how you do it. Now this is a double overhead can engine using a motorcycle, a four cylinder motorcycle. They have a coil on each of the two cylinders. So what happens is a coil will fire both spark plugs at once and both cylinders are in a different phase. One is on the exhaust stroke and one is on the firing stroke. Now, that's great news for us who are doing this modification because all we have to do is modify the spoke plug timing to be before bottom dead center instead of top dead center and change the ratios of the cogs on the cams so that they're in one-to-one -one ratio. Also, what you have to do is to redesign the fuel intake so it takes it as a fuel injection system without oxygen. And of course, the ratios of how long the valve is open will allow this to do this properly. 